As many of you may know, I've been practicing witchcraft for over eight years now, and my journey up to this point has been a long, confusing, and difficult one, often leaving me with far more questions than answers. But as the years have gone by, and with reflection had upon my own path, I've found quite a few learnings that I wish I had known before beginning. So today, I'm going to do my best to help those of you just beginning to feel a little bit less overwhelmed. So, without further ado, let's get into this. There isn't a right time to begin practicing spell work, and honestly, it's something you can start doing pretty much right away. A question I get asked time and time again is how to know when you're ready to begin practicing spell work. A question I relate to strongly as one of the things that scared me the most when I was first beginning my practice was actually beginning it. As I touched on in part one, it took me a long time to actually begin my path as I spent a lot of time worrying about messing up and not knowing enough to begin practicing spells. But in all honesty, this fear of beginning just kept me behind for significantly longer, as witchcraft is a fairly hands-on practice that you really must, well, practice to learn. Of course, there are exceptions and things to keep in mind, something I will touch on in a bit, but anyone can practice simple spell work at any time, regardless of how much of a beginner they may be. You don't have to know everything about herbs or the way colors correspond. Honestly, the two main components of successful spell work are intent and intuition, and having the ability to confidently apply both or an understanding of each really is all that you need to enter into practicing. Everything else just adds to it and helps direct the energy at play. I know the concept of intent may be daunting at first, but as I touched on in part one, most of the time in our daily lives, we are performing spell work without even realizing it as we are constantly putting unconscious intent behind our actions in life. All those coincidences or moments you wished for that came to be are examples of accidental everyday spell work, a form of spell work you've been performing forever. So really, there is no right time to begin as you already have. All that's really different now is that it's more of a conscious effort. Of course, there are many different ways to apply your intent, and I've explained it a bit before. I will link a video up above and down below where I delve into it deeper, and I do plan on doing a more in-depth video focusing solely on both intent and intuition in the future so that I can hopefully explain it in a way that is easy for everybody to grasp. But all that really matters is that you feel confident and ready yourself. Again, you don't have to know everything right away, and following spells written by others like the ones I have on my channel here are a great way to begin and find your footing. And speaking of this, my next tip or thing I wish I had known is that you can rewrite spells to suit your needs or what you have on hand. Each and every one of us lives in a completely different place with completely different access to materials and the natural world around us. And so it's only natural to rewrite spells or work things in different ways that suit what you have and your needs. A great deal of my practice is built on what I have growing in abundance around me, meaning that my practice is deeply season-based and changes depending on the time of year and where I'm currently living. And even though I write the majority of my own spells nowadays, every time I search for inspiration or stumble upon one that may prove useful in life, I alter it to suit what I have on hand at the time. Truly, it's just as simple as it sounds. This is something I didn't quite realize in the beginning, and when I was first searching for spells and finding things in books or on the internet, I often felt as though I couldn't execute them because most of the time I didn't have each and every material listed, nor did I have access to them. But as I slowly began delving deeper in my own practice, I realized that there are substitutions for everything, and honestly, taking a spell and altering it to suit you makes it more powerful in the end. As I touched on in part one, though it takes time, each witch will develop a signature, and a big part of that is experimenting with spells or altering existing ones to see what works best for them. 
Doing so helps you to strengthen your practice more so than you otherwise would when just following a spell recipe as is. Besides, what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for another, and so it's important to give yourself some freedom to mix things up a bit, to try to make things work out better for you. However, of course, there are areas of practice that you do need to enter into with a bit of caution, patience, and know-how, such as deity work, or other areas that you may not quite be able to enter into, such as closed practices. Something that is seldom spoken about. It's not uncommon to come across practices that borrow from other people's cultures, and unfortunately, it's often from oppressed ones. Thus, it's exceptionally important to be educated on the history of witchcraft and actively work to avoid practices that are not meant for you, all easily done with a bit of research. Understanding where your practices came from and the many terms and rituals that have been appropriated from marginalized communities, along with respecting the boundaries of closed practices, is immensely important. At the end of the day, there's a reason why they're protected. But beyond that still, there are quite a few things that it's important to be educated on, especially in witchcraft. Performing simple spells, like cleansing or protection spells, are not going to be an issue. Things that you enter into like that, you can start from the beginning. Basically, every spell I've ever shared here, every recipe, everything, it's open to beginners. But practicing deity work or communing with spirits or things that house a bit more complexity than simple spell work is something that benefits, again, from caution, respect, and education. Next, one of the things I realized later, and one of the things I wish I had realized sooner, is that it's worthwhile to take your time to study and understand other practices, even ones that you don't see yourself ever using once again remaining respectful of those close to you. Doing this will help you round out your understanding of magic and will even offer different perspectives on your own craft that you may have not otherwise seen, things that you can expand on later. And lastly, something I say all the time, but still an important point to hammer in, witchcraft is a lifelong journey. Your path and understanding is going to grow and evolve forever. So there's absolutely no need to feel rushed to label yourself or learn everything because you have time. And above anything else, it's important to trust yourself and do what feels right to you. You're gonna know better than anybody what's going to work best for you and suit your craft, even if you don't think you do. Take some time to try out different areas of the craft and Whatever comes to you most naturally or feels most comfortable to you is what's going to work for you. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to start making more of these beginner witchcraft big things to delve into. If you're new here, I teach about witchcraft. I have lots of beginner spells and beginner information all over my channel and I plan on doing quite a bit more in the future. I have a lot of fun making these, and I hope you guys enjoy them as well. If you want to help and can help support this channel, I'd really appreciate it if you went and checked out my Patreon. I know it's not for everybody, but it really does make a big difference. And if you want to check out more of my life or see some of the other things I create, you can go check out my other channel, which will be linked down below. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a lovely day, and I can't wait to see you soon.